I have the honors to introduce our speaker today. Um, and I was praying. I was really praying and asking the Lord, like, God, what's something really honorable about Colin? And the first word that came to mind <laughs> was humble. Um, for those people that, that know Colin, um, he's really humble. Um, and it's because he's constantly at the feet of Jesus. Um, I, you, I mean, I don't really know him. I've been known him for a really long time, but from the things that he does say, I know that he's like spent time with the Lord. Like he, everything that comes out of his mouth is always about Jesus. And he's going to say it confidently because I know that he spent time with the Lord, like wrestling through these things. Um, and also another thing is he, he cares about the things that God cares about. Um, just seeing him like being on campus and, and fighting for the laws to really know him. Um, and the reason like he cares about the hearts and he knows how to get to the hearts of people because he knows the heart of God. Um, so I would listen up for everything that he has to say. And if everybody could welcome him up here. I was about to cry. Thank you. I want to raise this thing. Dude. Is that good? Can you see me? Wrong password. Okay. Dang. Okay. All right. To start, I'll talk about who I am. Imna said we're from AM, part of the team. Um, it's funny because I was raised, um, my dad was an Aggie, and growing up, I was like, dude, I hate UT, and I had no idea why. But I knew I knew I was supposed to hate them. I just knew it. Uh, so my dad's with the Lord now, so I know he's like just laughing it up uh, with the Lord because it's, it's just funny how the Lord works. Um, so I'll share a little bit of my testimony uh, to start. But uh, yeah, so I grew up in a pastor's home. Um, at a young age, I really saw God move. Like it was, it was epic. I saw people like even get healed. I uh, saw people feel the Holy Spirit. Like you couldn't tell me that God wasn't real. I knew it without a doubt. And God did a lot of special things in my heart, too, at a young age. Um, but when I got to high school, I really, I walked away from the Lord. I, I went to church all the time as a, as a pastor's kid, like three times a week at least. But I was really religious in, in the way I lived. Um, I was one way at church and you know, one way at school with my friends or basketball friends. Or, and I was trying to live multiple lives, but God knows we can't do that. You're only one person. You only have one soul. And for me, that was, I was trying to be more than one person. And it, was, it wasn't until after my dad passed away in nine months of living like hell that I really surrendered my life to the Lord as an adult. And hopefully tonight, some people can have the same experience after being religious and not real with the Lord. Hopefully after tonight, some of you can have a similar experience. So, just like you. So we're going to talk about worshiping God for who he is. Um, the book I'm going to talk about a little bit or quote a few times is The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. Um, so the, the pages I quote are all in the first chapter, which is like five pages. And if you don't think you can give five pages of time to the Lord every day, then you're messed up. Like <laughs> You're tripping because you can spend 15 minutes reading a book or a book about the Lord or your Bible every day. And the, the quotes that are in this are, are short. They're not huge, but they'll change your life if you, if you read something like that every day. Um, okay. All right. So the first quote is, our real idea of God may lie buried under the rubbish of conventional religious notions and may require an intelligent and vigorous search 
before it is finally unearthed and exposed for what it is. Only after an ordeal of painful self probing are we likely to discover what we actually believe about God. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for this night. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to speak, Lord. I pray that you move in the hearts of these students, Lord God, at UT, and my friends from a &M, Lord, continue to speak to us, Lord Jesus. I pray you do something special tonight, and continue to speak to us, Lord. We know you still speak. We know you still move, Lord. In your name, amen. So this morning, I woke up sick, and I was like, dude, that's the devil. It had to be. So... I was like, I'm still going to preach, and I know it's the Lord that someone needs to hear this, so. Okay, one of my favorite sermons is, it's by David Wilkerson, and he's, like, preaching it, and if you've ever heard David Wilkerson preach, he yells a lot, like, the whole time. But it's on Spotify. It, the walls are down, is what it's called. I will look it up. Emily, you know that? Yeah? Type. So it's one of the best, like, sermons. I'm not talking about it at all, but he was so sick. <laughs> He was so sick in that sermon that he was just yelling and his voice was cracking the whole time. And I may not yell tonight. I'm a gentle guy. Um, <laughs> but the words I say will probably be sharp to your heart. Um, hopefully. If the Holy Spirit moves, it will work. But it'll be good. Um, but I'm excited. <clears throat> so the, the verses that um, we're going to talk about tonight, I didn't mean for them to be like the spiciest verses that I could think of. I was just trying to talk about a certain topic called idolatry um, or idol worship. And every one I looked into was spicy as heck. And I didn't, I didn't mean to, but this is, this is what happened. Um, so the, the first one, um, Revelation 21, 7 through 8. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their own part in the lake with burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The first one is cowardly. So tonight we're going to have an opportunity to respond. And I'm going to ask if you, if you want to respond to stand up. And every, every light's going to be on. Every eye's going to be open. If you want to look around, you can look around. Because if you're going to actually respond to this message, I believe it'll be in front of your friends. Um, I know that's true. Um, and all these things, idolaters. So the, the next verse is 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So I would look into each or one of these words if I were you. You don't have time to, some of them, you know exactly what they are when you read them. Some of them, you may not. So we're not going to break them all down tonight, but I would, I recommend it. it. You'll get closer to the Lord when you know what he likes and doesn't like. So do that when you can. Okay. Then it picks up and it says, such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified, in the name of the Lord and by the spirit of our God. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what someone tells you you were born or what you were like or who you are or what, what you're born to do, if it's evil and it doesn't honor God, God will change you. And God didn't make a mistake when he made you. But this is a testimony in the Bible that no matter what you're struggling with, that God can change you and he can show up today. So thank you, Lord. So in the Bible, it says that God is love. And all these things that we, we looked at in these two verses, um, they're a big deal. And God didn't just pick on these things. It may have stuck out in the last verse where it says liars will part in the lake of fire. They'll have their own place. Like, at surface level, you might think, God, chill out. Like, lying is not a big deal. But when we all know that when you have a relationship with somebody, that lying breaks it. And that if you're going to be God's friend, you can't be a liar at the same time. It's just true. He's, he's describing reality of what it's like to be a friend. Yeah. He's not just making up rules. God is not just going with the flow, saying, I don't like this thing or that thing. So if you do that, you can't be with me. But it's just reality. And that's what God describes in these verses. <clears throat> okay, so 
What is idolatry? So these are some. Oh, I think loaded on my TV. Push. Okay, dude. Nice. So obviously, idolatry is a fun. Not really. Okay, Spider-Man, video game, success, school, basketball, uh, relationships, guitars, music. Okay. This guitar, hey, you like this guitar? That's my guitar. Okay, my mine's a little different. It's left-handed. I don't think that one is. So close enough, but there's like little waves on it that are really cool. I love this guitar and it's like really pretty and sparkly. But I'm not that good at guitar, so I'm a turn alert. I'm sorry. I'm actually not that bad, like the wrong way, because that's how I started to learn. So if I pick up that guitar, I'm like, I'm not as good as I am with that guitar, the left handed one, but it's not that far off. It's kind of weird, but it's hilarious. Okay. I told you. I... <laughs> Don't laugh at me, man. All right, last night. Last night at our Chi Alpha, my voice is cracking because we had Wednesday night Chi Alpha at AM, and my voice was just cracking the whole time. I was like, dang, it's gonna, tomorrow, it's gonna happen. And it did. I was talking to David, I was like, we were breaking down the drum set and stuff, and I was like, yeah, cracking every other word. I was like, it's gonna happen. And it did. So that's fine. Okay. Idolatry is loving anything, anyone, or any idea more than the God who made us all. Um, when I first wrote this sentence of what idolatry is, I had this word was it. it. It said it. And I was talking to some of the interns. And I was like, I think I need to change it because God didn't make the wrong ideas about himself. Um, God didn't make all the things, all the things that we can at least make things with. And he made everyone wonderfully complex in their mother's womb. But God did not create the wrong ideas. Man did. Um, yeah. So there's two types of idolatry, really one, but I'm going to break it down. There's the kind where, well, you watch too much movies, you care too much about Spider-Man, or you play video games for 10 hours a day, or all you do is you live for success, and someday I can get enough money to, to stop working. Someday I can just get there, just, just get there. And right now you're in school, it could be school. Um, all you do is you work and everything revolves around work. And the world may tell you that's what you're supposed to do, but it's not true. It's just not true. It could be basketball, it could be a relationship. If you put your relationship with, with anyone before the Lord, it's gonna fall apart. I'll right. tell you that right now. Sure. And it could be a beautiful left handed guitar. Um, you know, that's my biggest struggle right now. Not really, I don't, I haven't played in like two weeks. I'm lying, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but this is not the kind of idolatry we're going to talk about. Now tonight, if you want to respond and you know that's you, then, then respond, get along with the Lord and respond. But we're actually going to talk about ideas, wrong ideas about the Lord um, and what comes with that. <clears throat> okay. So I need two volunteers. I wasn't going to do this, but during worship, I thought of, you know, using volunteers. So... I don't want to use you guys. You, Craig? You want to come up? You don't really have to say anything. Promise? Yeah. So these guys, this is your first time I can but give them a hand. Dude, this is cool. I don't even know. I met you guys like separately like two weeks ago or one week ago. Okay, one of you on this side, one of you over here. Yeah. All right, who who grew up in Texas? Oh my goodness, not Auntie. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's hilarious. I thought it was gonna be less. That's actually crazy. So we we know Texas is in the Bible Belt. Does anybody know what the Bible Belt is? Yeah. Dude, it's an area, southeastern area of the U.S. where. Church attendance is doing pretty solid compared to other areas. Like, there's a church on every corner. Like, they may not be doing that well anymore, but at least they were. Um, but the Lord is really moving that area. It's true. Um, so who grew up going to youth group? Anybody? You guys? No? Nice. 
So a lot of us grew up in youth group. It makes sense. You're in the Bible Belt. You're in Texas. <laughs> you're in high school. You go to youth group. Makes sense. So this person, Craig, there's two paths. Once you start to claim to be a Christian, there's two paths you can go on. I believe this is true. You could be on Craig's path, which is the low path, or you could be on Promise's path, which is the high path. And the sun's this way. That works, too. Okay. <laughs> Promise. He promised. He grew up. He went to youth group. Went to church with the homies. He had fun. And Promise, he actually, he read his Bible. And he heard the pastor, youth pastor, preach about it, talk about it. And, man, it really, like, moved him. You know, he thought the words were really cool. Craig, he did the same thing. He went to youth group. He heard pastors preach about God. He heard really cool things. And he was like, dude, solid, like, good word. Both these guys at this point, they're, they're in the same, like, boat, you know. They both go to youth group. They're both in high school, middle school, whatever. But Promise, when he reads, like, passages like we just saw, he's like, oh, Lord, I need you. I don't want to. I don't want to be that way. I don't want that to be me. And he lets God change him. He lets God really do something in his heart. Now, Craig. <laughs> Craig, Craig read, read these passages, and this is what he did. He said, God, maybe his youth pastor talked about it and even explained it. He was like, you know, sounds like a good idea. But I'm going to say that my idea is better. I want to be right in my own eyes. And he told the Lord that really that he didn't trust him. What he said wasn't true. And while they both still claim Christianity, promise is letting God change him. And Craig is trying to change what God is like. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, give me a hand. Thank you. So promise is a good picture of what it really means to have a walk with God, but to really be born again, to be changed by the Lord. And Craig is what it means to be an idolater, what it means to, to really take the Lord's name in vain, to put it, to put Christianity. <laughs> wait, yeah, sorry, Craig. <laughs> to put the Lord's name on yourself, to say I'm a Christian, but then to never live like it. That's what it really means to take the Lord's name in vain. Garrett, me and Garrett were talking about this yesterday on campus, and that's what it really means to take the Lord's name in vain. Thanks, Garrett. <clears throat> so today, I met this guy. I won't tell you his name. Um, dude, it's hilarious. Okay. Craig and Promise, they're obviously both black dudes. It's, it's true. They're both black dudes. Is that true? Yeah. You can laugh. It's true. And the guy I met today is a black dude. It's funny. It's okay. You can laugh. I played basketball in high school. All my friends were black. It was cool. Like, those were just my homies. I'm just speaking off the hip at this point. There's no way, there's no way this is in you. You know this. But this guy I met today, it breaks my heart. He had this cross on, and he was on his, his moped little thing. And he was headed somewhere and he was doing something on his phone. I saw him stop in the middle of the speedway. And I was like, the Lord put it on my heart to walk over there, away from the booth, and then talk to him. So I do it. I walk over. I say, hey, man, like, can I pray for you? Like, what's going on? Like, how are you doing? Just try to start a conversation with him. And he, he wasn't interested at all. He was, he was really not listening. And he was like, I was like, well, do you love God? He's like, yeah. And he, he just points at his, his little necklace. And I'm like, okay, like, that's a piece of jewelry. I understand that it's a cross. And I'm so thankful for what the Lord did on the cross, but I was more concerned if he was, if he was promised or if he was Craig, if he was living it out or if he wasn't. That's what I was concerned about, not about the jewelry on his neck. <clears throat> and this guy, he was like, I, I told him, I was, I was basically trying to get to the heart of where he is with the Lord. And I asked him, I said, Jesus said, that if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. What does that mean to you? And his idea of God has changed. He was in Craig's shoes. He was, he said, well, I haven't killed anybody. And I was like, nice, good job. Like, like, okay, good job. But it breaks my heart because immediately the Lord put on my heart. I was like, I don't know if I should say this. 
I was like, but you've done this. And, and immediately he knew. He's like, well, yes, I have done this. And I am doing this. Like, he's living in this sin. And his idea of God, that, that God doesn't take sin serious, breaks God's heart. He really does. And, yeah. Lord, help me, Jesus. Okay, in Romans 1, 20, it says, For since the creation of the world, okay, if you want to study this topic, Tonight, read Romans 1. Read the whole thing. Read it through. You'll see what it leads to, what wrong ideas of what the Lord leads to. And it'll help you really understand what I'm talking about tonight. Um, but Romans 1, the whole chapter, I'll read it. <clears throat> For since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. <clears throat> Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. <clears throat> Lord, help this not be us. Help this not be us, Lord. So in the, in the first verse, I want to go over this a little bit, that no man has an excuse where whenever they're, they stand before God, no man has an excuse saying, God, but I didn't grow up in this country. I wasn't in the Bible Belt, God. There's no excuse. When I walk around this campus, it's actually a beautiful campus. I'll admit it, okay? I will. There's The trees sparkle, and it's such a beautiful thing. I don't know why. It's just every time I come, I almost, I look at it, I'm like, dang. This is just beautiful. Thank you, Lord. God is the best artist. His creation says something powerful. And some people might object to this, saying it's cruel for God to, to judge people who do not know him. Then I think about, I have a new understanding of this verse since coming here and meeting Anchi. I'm so grateful for Anchi. He's a man of God, and I love him. Dude, round of, round of applause for Anchi. <laughs> I have a new understanding of this verse because if you don't think that this verse is true then your god is too small if you don't think the lord can give visions or dreams or send missionaries to a place to meet someone who's ready to know the lord then your god is too small and my new understanding is god can move people to ut to meet him there can be someone at booth or on campus that you meet that came from another country and never had the opportunity there, but God brought them here to meet you, to meet the Lord, to meet Jesus. Yeah. If you don't think that can be true, then your God is too small. <clears throat> In verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Now this is, you can glorify God as something cool, a wise guy, someone who knows a lot, but not glorify him as God. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants to be glorified for who he is. Don't we all want to be loved for who we are? Now, the person who's holy and blameless, shouldn't he even more We want to be loved for who he is? <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of an incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. When you have wrong ideas about God, it first starts with who you are and what you, you think. If you don't think God takes sin serious, it's because you first didn't. You first decided that sin is not a big deal. It does not bother the Lord. And therefore, God doesn't mind. It's not, I can't actually change. So why does it matter? So another thing about verse 20, I love this. You think about, I went to Galveston um, this past weekend, played in the sand, you know, played football. It was really cold in the water, so we mainly played football. But sand is like, it's such a small little thing. But humans can't make a grain of sand. Like We can't make it out of nothing. We can't do it. We've tried. It's impossible. God alone is creator. I just thought that was cool, so I want to share that. <clears throat> 
So I grew up, the first seven years of my life, I lived in Kansas. I'm glad you didn't applaud. That's not a cool thing in any way. <laughs> no, in no way am I like, dude, I'm from Kansas. There's nothing I can look back and be like, that was tight. But this, well, okay. God moved in the churches we were at. But other than like the corn, like I guess, I don't know. Okay. For, in Kansas, especially I go back into the adult and I see this, that everyone, everyone either smoke cigarettes or meth or both. Like almost everybody, I'm not joking. Like it's, everyone is smoking cigarettes. Like all my friends in school, their dads were, were drinking and smoking and they just, the kids smelled like it was really sad. And there were people in our church who were just getting right with God and they still had habits like this. And I remember them coming to church um, smelling like smoke and it's not a big deal like coming to church i love you like please be a part of the church i was a kid so i didn't really have thought like that but obviously it's fine if you're gonna be in the church but i just remember sometimes like them trying to put cologne over it like it's gonna cover this mistake and i don't know if you've ever had a family member who's who's lived like this with this habit but you can't actually get rid of it without being a washed and you can't cover up wrong ideas about god with religious activities it won't work you must deal with the source directly you have to you won't get anywhere trying to cover it up <clears throat> so the next quote from this book this book is the knowledge of the holy it's a good book you should read it um okay among the sins to which the human heart is prone, hardly any other is more hateful to God than idolatry. For idolatry is at bottom a libel on his character. His idolatry, oh, I'm sorry. The idolatrous heart assumes that God is other than he is. In itself, a monstrous sin and substitutes for the true God, one made after his own likeness. Always this God will conform to the image of the one who created it. And will be base or pure, cruel or kind, according to the moral state of the mind which it emerges. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, the next slide. So I made up some examples that might help you understand what I mean when I say idolatry or wrong ideas about God. These are short and they're not flawless, they're not perfect, but to help you get an idea. <clears throat> so the teddy bear God, excuse my crack again. <clears throat> this God, notice they're all lowercase because they're not real. They're not real guys. Just notice that. They have no power. Nothing really is going to come from relationship with them. Dude, more water. Nice. Man, I ain't got that much left. I mean, thanks, David. <clears throat> I really don't have that much left. Okay. Okay, so the teddy bear God. This God doesn't get upset with sin. He just eats the punishment for you and is good. Now, I've been doing campus ministry for a couple of years with Chi Alpha. It's been the best. Um, but we meet people on campus every day who worship this God. Every day, every day I meet someone like this. Just like today, I met someone, just another person who thinks God does not take sin serious. And God is not just out here getting upset about stuff because he's looking for something to be mad about. But because he loves you and he wants the best for you and your highest good, he's going to show you the things that it takes to love him and to be happy. God, my friends like to say this, so I'm going to say it too. You can't be happy without being holy. It won't happen. And you'll definitely never be happy without relationship with the Lord. And you were looking at it for anything else. We all have 
we all, something comes to our mind when I say that. Everybody has a thing that comes to their mind when I say something else. Every day I meet someone who worships this guy. Okay. The Chinese buffet guy. I, there was a point where I weighed 270 pounds. And part of the reason was because of Chinese buffets. Um, I, have a, I have a strategy, actually. When I go to Chinese buffets, I'll tell you about it. You go, the first time you get like a little bit of everything, you just try it out. You don't, you don't commit to anything. You just get one piece of, you know, different things. And then you try them, and then you find out what's good. And then you go back, and you're like, okay, this is good. This is bad. This is good. And then you decide what pleases me and what doesn't. And you get all the stuff that pleases you the next time. Now, this may be good for an actual Chinese buffet, but it's not good with the Lord. Because you can't pick apart something that's so perfect. It just doesn't work. Imagine if you did this in any friendship. Imagine that would be so terrible. I want this part of you, but not that part of you. Whenever you do this, stay away from me. I don't want, it just doesn't work. Imagine, none, not very many of us are married, but some of us are. Dude, imagine what kind of marriage that would be. It wouldn't be one. It wouldn't be one. <clears throat> and the grandma guy. Maybe I should have put these on different slides so you wouldn't read them. Um, but the grandma guy. This is a religious leader referred to God as a God like this not that long ago. A big religious leader in our world referred to God as a grandma, literally. And it's scary that these gods are actually referred to and like thought about as what God is really like because it's just not true. When talking about this grandma God, this, this le religious leader was saying that prayer didn't work and that God is just here to bless us like a grandma and to be around when we have to need advice. And we all know a grandma likes to give good gifts. And so does God. Praise God, Praise God for grandma. Dude. My grandmas are the, are the best. It's just true. And they give good advice. But it is not all that God is. That is not all that God is. Okay, the bearded guy in the sky this is what most non-Christians think about the Lord. Just some guy chilling. And if you've read the Bible for at least a little bit, you know that this is not what God is like. It's not an impersonal, inactive being just chilling in the sky. God is active today. If you, the way the Bible refers to religion is giving to the poor and the needy. That's what true religion is, the widows. So in our, in our world, we've been trained to think about religion in a cert, certain way, that it's certain worldviews or certain this or certain that. But the Bible talks about the dealings of one God with man. The Bible, the whole Bible is God's dealings with man. If you're a Christian, it should be clear that Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by him. Do not be deceived by other people, other teachings, other religions. Because Jesus is the way. And if you don't believe that, you're not a Christian. I'll tell you right now. Jesus is exclusive. You know why he's exclusive? Because you can only be happy if you're holy and right relationship with God. It's for your highest good that this is true. It's for your highest good. <clears throat> God is still active today. I promise you. And if God wasn't personal, oh man, like it would be bad. God is, okay, I won't say. God is awesome. And God is personal and he wants to deal with you tonight personally i'm not here talking to chi alpha i'm here to share what the lord's put on my heart so the holy spirit can convict you personally <clears throat> maybe maybe you're worshiping a buddy god 
and we're cool. I can live how I want, see him every once in a while. Maybe like he knows I messed up. He understands that I sin. Like it's cool. He understands. Like we're friends. And that's all you refer him to as, you know, I'm cool. Like the guy today who was like, this is my cross. Like, look, look I have the jewelry. I have the jewelry. <clears throat> But this isn't what friendship with God looks like. When you love someone, just like how God loves us, he will tell us what hurts us because he loves us. Love doesn't affirm things that hurts the person, your friend. And God wants to be your friend. God wants to know you personally and intimately. And this is not the kind of friend that God wants to be with you. He does not want to be a shallow friend, but he wants to be an unselfish, loving friend. All right, the last two I stole. So the Kyle projector at Arkansas, he used these, but they are still good. Isn't that right, Garrett? Still good? Still good. Okay, the Chick-fil-A guy, just a personal savior and here to serve us. This is what the church today often thinks about God as as a whole. I don't know what kind of backgrounds most of you have, but even in my background, I've seen it so many times where a pastor would say, All right, if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, come, bow, um, and say these words after me, and say maybe 15, 20 words. Um, and then afterwards, say, you are good, heaven is rejoicing, and basically you're good, thumbs up, green light for the rest of your life. And we, deep down, we all know that this is not what relationship with God looks like. Deep down, we know that relationship with God is not 20, 15 words in a row just repeated after somebody. We know it's true. And... Craig over here, he probably at a youth camp said that prayer and probably with a right heart, God, I, I, I do mess up. I, I did sin. I need you. But going forward, he, just like promise, he didn't let God change him. He didn't let God change him. He changed his idea of God based on what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it. <clears throat> Jesus did come to serve. It's true. But Jesus is also Lord. Jesus is king. And he is to be served as king. And every person, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Whether you like it or not, you are going to bow. I hope it's on this side of eternity. I hope it's on this side of eternity. That you bow your heart to a living God. The last one is, is the God I serve. The stained glass God. You didn't just go to church on Christmas and Easter. You went. You really went. But you left them there. You thought God was only at church. You thought he was only at youth group. You tried to live two lives. And you wanted nothing to do with God. You wanted nothing to do with him outside of church. You thought he was boring. If you think God is boring, I don't know what's going to entertain you. Nothing will. If you think, seriously, if an infinite God is boring to you, heaven is not going to be fun for you. And God will not force it on you. He won't. Heaven might not be for you. If you don't, if you don't love God for what he is, it's not for you. I'll say it. It's not for you. But tonight you can bow your heart to God for what he's really like and who he is and all of his holiness and love and mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. 
If you think God is boring, you're in trouble. All those things I had on that slide earlier will fail. Sports will fail. Music will fail. It will. But God, God won't blow away in the wind. God will be the one you can lean on, and he won't fall over. Thank you, Jesus. And in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not heard, or have not received, or a different, different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. <clears throat> For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. In this passage, Paul is talking to the Corinthians, a church notorious for for some crazy sins, if you look into it. And he's saying to them, if someone else preaches another Jesus, they come and talk about a Jesus that doesn't save. We know it. There's only one Jesus who saves, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. He's saying, if someone else comes and preaches of a different Jesus, I don't know if you'll be able to stand strong. I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference between what's right and what's wrong. I don't think you'll be able to tell. He was concerned about them. If anybody has looked into it, the way they train people for counterfeit money, to be able to tell if money is counterfeit, they show them the right thing over and over and over and over and over again. And then finally, they slip the wrong thing in, and immediately they see it. They say, that's wrong. But because their eyes have been on the right thing for so long, it's so quick. There's something in their spirit that just knows, like, that's wrong. And I think the Lord put it on my heart to share tonight because that's some of you. That you don't have that assurance. You don't have that. You don't know what the Lord is like. You know what other people have said. You know what you've heard in church. But you yourself do not know what the Lord is like. And just like Paul, I'm pleading with you to get your eyes on Jesus. I don't want your house to be built on sand. Something that will fall. But built on Jesus and what he did on the cross for you. To deal with you personally. The last slide. You can't truly love someone until you know what they're like. Now we know that when we see a guy pursue a girl and he knows nothing about her, that is shallow. We know it. You know that's shallow. It makes you sick, probably, if that's all it is to that guy or that girl. It'll make you sick to think about that. Because that's not love. That's not what love is. And tonight, I want to ask you, do you love God? Do you? Do you know what he's like? Now, I've never been married. Some of my friends are married. Garrett, Sarah, just got married. Good. Nice. Good job. Good job, Garrett. I didn't ask to share this, but I think it's okay. Right, Garrett? Yeah. Okay. When Garrett first asked about Sarah, Garrett was a little bigger and he, he was fatter. It's okay. He worked at a pizza place. Like it happens, we know it happens. But 
there was something right when when Gary asked her out she said no and that's okay but just like the gentleman that Garrett is he didn't continue to stalk her he did not continue to to god forbid <laughs> praise god that's right sir. that's right because that would have been wrong and that wouldn't have been the gentleman that Garrett is and God, God is a gentleman, just like Garrett. God says that he's knocking at the door. But you have to open it. A right relationship with him. He is not a creep, but a gentleman. Me and Anchi were talking about this earlier. That people in history have come to, to love God without having a Bible. This is cool because you can read about it in the Bible when that happened. It's crazy. They didn't have the whole Bible like we do or anything at all. But if God has revealed himself to be known in any way and you don't care to look at it ever, then there seems to be a problem in your relationship with the Lord. There just seems to be. If a baby isn't hungry, it's either sick or it's dead. If you're not hungry to know what the Lord is like, there is something seriously wrong. And I, I beg you tonight, assess yourself. Assess yourself. Now, I want to... I want to actually go back and read the first quote from A.W. Tozer. Our real idea of what God may, wait, our real idea of God may lie buried under the rubbish of conventional religious notions and may require an intelligent and vigorous search before it is finally unearthed and exposed for what it is. Only after an ordeal of painful self probing are we likely to discover what we actually believe about God. And I'm going to ask just, just Jonathan to come play on the piano. That's all, all I need, all I'd like. <clears throat> Tonight, there's two responses. And if you have not been loving God for who he says he is, this is the first response. I want you to stand up. And if you have not, or if you have called yourself a Christian, just like Craig, but you've been changing God instead of letting him change you, then I'm also going to ask you to stand up. you haven't lived this, a, a changed life, a born-again life, then I'm talking to you. Okay, the first one. If you have not been loving God for who he says he is, would you stand up? If you have not been loving God for who he says he is, Give me one more second. So before the service, I was told that standing up in these chairs during the altar call is not comfortable and they squeak. And I know that with the lights on and everyone looking around, it's not comfortable to stand up. But to be a friend of God, you can't be a coward. You just can't be. So I thank you in front of your friends for standing up. Thank you, Jesus. And the second one, if you have called yourself a Christian but haven't lived a new life, would you stand up?
for a few minutes when everyone spend time alone with the Lord and pray and ask God to reveal himself tonight in a new special way. Stand up, get on your knees, whatever you prefer. And then someone in a few minutes, would you love on these girls? on my heart to share. You know, he told he told me that there's some of us in this room who we would like to believe that we could change, but in reality, like we've stopped caring and we've stopped allowing ourselves to feel convicted because we feel like there's just no way I can change. And I've tried and I've tried my best I just can't change. And the Lord is speaking to you, whoever you are, the Lord is speaking to you that in your own power, you're right. You know, you can't, you can't do it on your own power, but he wants to remind you of his power. And he wants to remind you that he's a miracle working God and what you can't do in the natural, he can do in the supernatural. So I'm just going to pray over you if that's you. If there is something in your life and as Colin was speaking that you're like, man, like I want to feel convicted, but I don't feel like I have any ability to stop this on my own. If that's you, just I mean, I would call you to be courageous. Lift your hand and we're going to come surround you in prayer and we're going to help you um, move towards freedom tonight. But I'm just going to pray. So if that's you, you can lift your hand, ask for prayer um, or pray where you're at. But I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus, I speak to these people right now, Lord God, that have been dead inside because they have tried and they can't change on their own power, Father God. 
I pray right now if there's anybody in this room, anybody within the the able to hear my voice, I pray that your spirit would come upon them and that you would do supernaturally what we are unable to do, Lord, in our own strength. Father God, I pray, Lord, that we could change. Lord, that our hearts would be awakened to conviction again because we realize that there's something better that is possible. Lord, there is a better way of living that is possible. Father God, it's possible. That's for somebody in this room that it's possible to change and it's possible to walk with God in holiness. This is not some ideal. This is a reality that can be attained, you guys. This is a reality. It's not an ideal. So I pray this over you guys and I pray, Lord Jesus, would you set people free? you set people free tonight God show them what you can do when you come into the picture Lord show them what you can do Lord when it's your blood that cleanses whenever it's your power that's helping them to make those choices to live for you amen Lord Jesus, <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for the night, Father. Thank you for what you've done in the hearts of these people, your children, Lord God. Thank you for loving us like a good father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did on the cross, Lord. Forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray. As we look at the person that Jesus was, and we saw that he lived with no sin, Lord, I pray that we can fix our eyes on him and how he overcame it. He knew no sin. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for these students as we keep our eyes on you, Lord, that everything else becomes strangely dim. I thank you for what you've done tonight in the hearts and how you move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your mighty name, amen. I think tonight they're going to go to Chick-fil-A after this. Now, I... I'm not done. <clears throat> In Hebrews 10, 26, it says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. I'm not going to have another response time because you should have stood up the first time. And I'm not going to give you a chance tonight. So you're going to have to get along with God tonight at your house or your, your room. And you're going to have to come back and tell your friends how you screwed up if this is you. But if you're like Craig, if you, sorry, Craig, if you're the person right here and you continue to sin willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, after hearing 
what Jesus did for you on that cross after stepping over his body. And there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. Judgment is not supposed to be a bad thing. It's not. But you fear it because you know you're not ready for it. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I didn't go to AM or UT. I went to Lone Star Community College for one year, one semester. Sorry. But I know whenever I studied for a test, and I did all that I could to do good on the test, I lived up to what I knew. And I was ready to receive my judgment. I was ready to see how I did on a test. I wanted to know, I was excited to see how I did. I was excited. Some of you were so scared to see how you did on that test. Walking with God is living blamelessly, living up to what you know, living holy. Only then will you be happy. God knows what's best for you. But some of you aren't living up to what you know is right about God. So if that's you, and you know you should have stood up, tonight you must get along. Spend time with the Lord. Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Thank you again, Lord, for tonight. What you're going to continue to do, Lord, as people go home, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for moving tonight. I thank you for this school. I thank you for these students, Lord. I pray that their time here at UT is no longer just about themselves, Lord. That a Christian cannot be selfish, Lord, but as we put you first, God, that we know you'll move on this campus. You can save this campus, this city, Lord. Looking around, we see what sin does to people, Lord. But worst of all, we see what it does to you, God, and how it hurts you, Lord. We break your heart. Jesus, I pray you show us what you really like and what you want from us, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name, amen.